So hello, my name is Somo Varadia, I am a medical doctor, and I'm here to talk to you about transgender ideology or gender ideology, and we're going to examine it in more detail than what you are probably familiar with. Now, this lecture is for medical doctors because I'm trying to educate medical doctors on how insane gender ideology is. A lot of doctors have an idea, and they know it makes no sense, but they don't truly know how dark and twisted the ideo ideology is. Having said that, pretty much anybody can listen to this and also pick up things even if you're not in the medical field. And in short summary, what I'm going to be saying throughout this presentation is that gender ideology is rooted in pedophilia and child abuse, and they are still practicing that today, literally still incorporating outright pedophilia and child abuse into the standards of care, and the entire ideology makes no sense because society has turned into full idiots. So let's get started. I'm going to go over the history and the modern movement of it, and the definitions probably in the first hour. I had to split this lecture into two parts because it would go too long otherwise. So that'll happen in the first lecture, and then I'll release the second one with the talking about the diagnoses and the treatments that they're offering, or the quote-unquote treatments because they're not actually treating anything. So a couple of things. is Number one, none of the information here presented are things that I actually discovered. I just took things from online uh, journalists, online blogs, and online Twitter accounts because mainstream media would not report this. Uh, the medical organizations will not report this because they're all become they've all become liars and criminals. So, effectively, I got a lot of information from Substacks, from Glam, Graham Linehan and Genevieve uh, Gluck, who have gone into detail on these subjects a lot. Uh, additionally, every slide here is real. I have not made any changes to the information presented. No matter how insane it seems, we're just dealing with the completely insane ideology. And what is presented here is by no means comprehensive. I'm only showing you about 5% of what I could show you. Also, I'm going to be speaking fast because there's a lot of information. I don't want to make this go on too long. Hopefully, it'll still all be clear enough, even though I'm speaking fast, because it's not that complicated of a material. So, a couple other notes. This debate is literally one of the stupidest debates in human history. Even a fifth grader can debunk all of gender ideology. But it just signifies how far our society has fallen that even adults, and even adults with medical degrees, can't actually explain what gender is, what man or woman are nowadays, and so on. It's because our society has devolved, honestly, and so these arguments are taken now as intelligent and, more importantly, progressive. So 99% of these kids don't even have gender, dys gender dysphoria. They're simply falling into a social fad and having their mental illness preyed upon. And those people in favor of of brainwashing these kids want to stop any debate they want to silence you because if you start talking then their entire argument falls apart because it makes no sense so just to show you how little sense it makes here is a collection of many men who are now taking full advantage of the new gender ident identification system where you can just call yourself a woman or a female and just because you do that you automatically become one so here in the top left hand corner we have uh in the uk we have a rapist let me get the laser pointer who changed his name or changed his gender and his name from adam graham to isla bryson after he was found guilty of raping two women so then now he's serving time in an all-female prison so you have a man who is obviously looking like a skinhead with tattoos on his face who threw on a wig to cover up his tattoos and then put on some makeup and then boom he just called himself not just a woman but a female and clearly he had no surgery because he has, still has a bullet here and now he is a man who raped women who now gets to spend time in a jail with more women. And if you disagree, you are the bigot, according to the transgender activist. Here's another one where this Canadian high school teacher said that he was a woman, put on a wig and some enormous prosthetic breasts as a big joke, and everybody in Canada was forced to respect his pronouns and the fact that he was a woman, etc. He was actually making a big joke out of the whole self-identification system, but since we're in such a stupid society, our politicians and public school administrators couldn't actually figure that out. And so he pretty much trolled the entire country in the Western world for the better part of half a year. This guy is a 50-year-old biological male who now competes against 13-year-old girls, and this is real, in swim competitions. He also gets to change in their locker room, and I'm not making that up. And when he was confronted about it, if the, the journalists who confronted him about it were actually called transphobic, and they were the ones asked to leave, not him. He actually ran away because he got found out, but still, the organizers of the event asked the journalists to leave the event. They were literally letting him change with the 13-year-old girl. 
Now, obviously, here was one more. You can see clearly Zara Jade, beautiful woman, <laughs> stubble. I wouldn't want to mess with her, uh, and I'm a man myself. Here's my two favorite ones where there is this tech conference in San Francisco called the Grace Hopper Conference for women and non-binary people. That's like the actual intention of the conference. And so what a bunch of guys from India did because they wanted to go to the conference for job opportunities, they just checked non-binary on the application, which is legal. Whatever you say you are is what your gender is. And so they flooded the conference with hundreds and hundreds of, of men. And that pissed off all the women there. But nothing you can do about it. Legally, socially, it doesn't matter. They are what they say they are. And this one's probably the best. This is a Kylie Palm, a biological male, who pretended to be pregnant, then said he had a stillbirth. He then raised money to help with his grief. He attended birthing classes with women, some of whom were kicked out of the class for saying he was a man pretending to be pregnant. So not only did he profit off of his fake pregnancy, he also was able to get women kicked out of a class. Uh, and so... This is better than any South Park episode, any Monty Python movie. And if it weren't for the fact that these gender ideologues were going after kids, I actually wouldn't mind all this because I think it's all hilarious. Uh, because that's how stupid our world has become. Now, how did our world become so stupid is what you might be asking. Well, the quick answer is colleges. Colleges are actively teaching this. And it's actually going down into grade school and uh, junior high now, as I'll show you shortly. But college students nowadays, in many colleges cannot tell you what a female is or a woman is or what organs each sex has literally i'll show you videos of that and not only that they believe truly in their hearts that if a man simply says that he identifies as a woman that he not only becomes a woman but that he also becomes a female and that there and then there are also fully grown women at women's marches women's protests who cannot tell you what a woman is and shared bathrooms and things like that and because they're females, so, so why would that why would that matter then? Can you say they're, they're identified as females. They believe they're females, so yeah. they're female. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. How would you define what a woman is? Hmm. How do I define what a woman is? Oh my God. <laughs> I think a woman. Well, that's that's a trick question. Oh wow. A human being. Um, we're selling uterus pins, but that doesn't mean that if you have a uterus, you're a woman, or if you don't have one, you're not a woman. Well, can be in the feminine way, but also can be in a non-binary -bi way as well. Any innate differences between men and women today? Um, uh, I don't know how to answer that question, actually. <laughs> Do you think that anyone can be a woman? Anyone probably could be a physical woman if they would like to. Totally. If they want to. Yes. I think it's a choice. As you can see, not the smartest people at all, but these people will call you a bigot if you misgender them. So here is more video where you have a, a college student, a guy, who thinks he's a woman, who is also an EMT, so he has some medical training, talking about how he is openly taught that if a person says that they're a woman, they are actually a female. And so you're seeing how the colleges and actual science classes are teaching them this nonsense. So you, what you're saying is that a quote-unquote trans woman is a female? By the definitions I'm familiar with, yes. So how would you define female? <laughs> Through my training in healthcare, there are several different categories for how we define sex. People bring up pr chromosomes. People also bring up hormone levels. People bring up all sorts of other categories. Lots of people don't fit neatly into a gender binary, even people we don't consider to be intersex. It's a complicated spectrum. It, it's not complicated, but you also didn't, you also didn't define. So, so what, is, what is a woman? What is a female? What, are, what do these words mean? It's complicated, and I know you're not going to like that answer, but that's because there are no simple answers. So this next video is a college girl who thinks that if a man calls himself a woman, surgically removes his penis, and gets a surgically constructed vagina, that he can now have children. She actually believes this. Just watch. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't be constricted by I mean, whatever your gender fine. is. I'm just saying, who's going to give birth, though? 
Well, that's just because my body works that way. But are you gonna, aren't you going to take care and like I mean, feed the baby? I mean, you can be trans, get a vagina, and then do the exact same thing. No, that's, no, not, that's not how it works. That's you, not how you can't well, do that. Work. No, you can't do that. No, you can't you do that. Can't. You have, you have to, to be, be born. Woman. Yeah. Really? Yes, because you have you're to be born, born with um, um, eggs. To give birth. You, your set amount of eggs. <laughs> he's just so happy by the camera. He, he just this can't so cut his dick off and then say he's a woman that's and make not, babies. That's not how, it works. how many yeah. genders are there? I, have that shit. I don't know. So many. Yeah, like, expensive. give out a number. I don't, I don't have a number. In terms of gender, there's I've, a spectrum. I've heard, like, over there's 50. No over 50? That's what I've heard. Huh? Well, what about you? How many genders are there? I was going to say, over 50. There's over 50. Can you name me, like, four? Four. Um, <laughs> you can only name two? I can only name two, because I'm Wait, Which one are they? I guess... Men and women, I guess. The if I ask, uh, I'm a lesbian. They, she. This next girl... Calls herself non-binary, trans, mass, they, he, all these words just to describe a woman. And you can see she has bandages over her breasts, indicating she had a mastectomy. Doctors removed her breasts because she described herself this way, even though she's clearly just a woman. And she's only about maybe 18 to 22 years old, so not very old at all. Uh, they, he, non-binary, trans, mass. I like frogs, not people. I'm sorry? I like frogs, not people. My husband back here is bisexual. He finally came out to me about that. It's not endangering them. If he wants to become a girl later on, I'm so for it. I'll tell him what hospital do you want to go to right now. How young do you think that kids can start telling us their gender identity? Kids know like almost immediately. I'd be as bad as soon as possible, right? Yeah, so yeah. able to formulate words. If that's how they feel, then that's who they are. I started hormones, testosterone when I was 14. Over COVID, I think me and my friend group, we kind of all started exploring our gender. And I think this, I think the internet had a really big part to play in a lot of our discovery. I don't think of myself as a female. I think of myself as a pansexual. I am a male trapped in a female's body. Being a man means you. Oh, um. They're scared they're going to be sent to a conversion camp or that they'll be executed if they're an adult. Executed? Yeah, so in Florida, which is where a lot of my family live in, some people can actually be, I've heard that some people can actually be put to death over there. So you can see the level of propaganda that is pumped into these young kids where they can't even describe their sexuality but they throw these words around. And this one girl, who looks like she's still in high school, actually believes that people are being put to death in the state of Florida for being transgender now you might be asking how do these kids believe this stuff how can they not think for themselves well that's because they don't know anything about any other subject and this next video is going to show you how people that are teenagers and even like 18 to 22 years old who you think would have learned stuff in public school have learned absolutely nothing they can't even answer very basic questions about the united states that even a third grader would know also note from this clip coming up how Everyone is either wearing a pride t-shirt or holding a pride flag. They know more about how many genders there are more than they actually know what the capital is of the United States or what states are in the country. Do you know how many stars there are on the U.S. flag? 52. Yes. What state is Utah in? Michigan. Yes. Do you know what state Utah is in? Utah, I... To be honest with you, I've never heard of that place ever in my life. I live under a rock. Can you name three countries besides the USA? I suck at history. That was like my worst subject. Can we do like science? No, no. Any three. Any three. You know this. A country? Oh my yeah. jeez. This is terrible. Do you know how many dimes there are in the dollar? <laughs> Make up one dollar. A dime is the ten cent or the five cent? You tell me. <laughs> I don't know. Can you name three countries besides the USA? Um. Damn. Any three. You know this. Canada? New Mexico? Right? That's I identify as bisexual, pansexual. What They're... is pansexual really quick? Because I'm not sure. Um, I might not be the best authority to speak on that. When I see an American flag, I, I, I immediately look at that per like, I'm like, that person's probably a bigot. That person's probably a homophobe. That person's probably a racist if they're just flying American flags out everywhere. So as you can see, that woman was actually a little bit older, but 
still can't even describe pansexual, even though she calls herself pansexual. Then on top of that, she describes anyone who waves an American flag as being a racist. And these two things are very closely tied together, where these people are identifying as LGBT, transgender, non-binary, etc., because they're trying to jump onto a political cause. They want to be social justice warriors and show everyone that they are anti-racist, anti-homophobic, etc., even though they can't even describe half of these terms. Also note her uh, pink hair. That is another sign that is very common within this community where they dye their hair to show their allegiance. And so here's the last clip, which shows you how a small child from the 1980s, without exaggeration, knows more about human biology than fully grown adults in the year 2024 from the all-time classic Kindergarten Cop. Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. So if you think that the 50 gender thing was just a joke and that only some college students believe that, what I'm showing you here is an application for guaranteed income for transgender people released by the city of San Francisco. So this is an official government document from the city of San Francisco. I, I took, I downloaded the document myself only a few days ago and took these screenshots myself. You can see here, Office of Transgender Initiatives via sf.gov, right? So this program was giving homeless people who also happen to identify as trans a guaranteed stipend of up to, I believe, $1,800 per month for, for nothing besides just being trans. And so obviously in the application, they had to identify what gender they were since they were trans. Let's look at the gender choices that these people have, right? So there is tons and tons, probably more than 50 choices. And I'm just showing you some of them, but look at some of the choices. One of them, and I'm not making this up. This is all real. You can download the PDF yourself. Man of trans experience trans uh, masculine female to male and then here's where it starts to get really crazy there's demi boy gender t t boy gender trans guy brother boy there's gender queer a gender xeno gender and we'll see that we'll we'll see that one pop up again then here's a good one there's aggressive gender so if a boy comes up to you at the age of 12 and says that they identify as aggressive gender because they saw it on an official government document you have to affirm them then here's the best one, gender outlaw, like a real cowboy. Then there's gender fluid, and then this is real as well, I'm not making this up, gender fuck. Then there's gender creative, gender expansive, omni-gender, right? I guess in case you're like a omnipotent god. Now, if you was, that wasn't crazy enough, here is the sexual orientation boxes where you can check. Check all that apply. Aromantic, asexual, then BDSM slash kink. Apparently, that is a sexuality, according to the experts. And remember, if you don't trust the experts, you're anti-science. Then there's bisexual. That's the first one you can actually recognize. That seems normal. Then there's demisexual. Then there's dyke. Again, I'm not making this up. This is an actual sexuality that you can choose. Then it gets even crazier. You can choose faggot. F-A-G-G-O-T. You can choose that as your sexuality to qualify for a monthly stipend from the city of San Francisco. Gets even crazier, because then there's something called scoliosexual, like scoliosis, but sexual instead. Then there's T4T, which apparently means trans for trans. And then you can also select I don't know or not listed, because apparently this list is just not good enough. So already you can see that the 50 genders that the college student was confused about are actually uh, s somewhat represented right here. And apparently if college students can't uh, get a grasp on that, Children apparently can enough to make life altering decisions. <clears throat> and we'll see xenogender again right here. So that was all a little crazy, but I'm just showing you that people within the healthcare field are starting to speak out. Unfortunately, not many doctors, but there are some other ancillary staff speaking out. So this Washington therapist reveals how she was told to throw out all of her training and give gender affirming care to abused, autistic, suicidal 13 year olds. She had another client, a 16-year-old girl, <clears throat> who stated, started saying she didn't feel like a girl anymore during the pandemic. And this is a theme as well. The pandemic caused a lot of mental illness in people. She had a plethora of mental Ill issues. The girl started using they slash she pronouns, similar to the other girl I showed you who had her breast removed. 
and identified as pansexual. Are you starting to see a theme? And using a gender-neutral name. Her father refused to let her take testosterone, so she did not. All that Mary Bridge Children's Gender Health Clinic could do in the meantime was give her birth control to stop her period due to her menstrual dysphoria. In early 2023, the girl had decided she was no longer gender neutral, but instead she identified as a wounded male dog. She was xenogender, a concept that goes, quote, beyond the human understanding of gender. She wanted to start wearing ears and a tail. The therapist, the whistleblower in the article, asked her colleagues if there was ever a time when being so freely affirming was not necessary, and the answer was no. One colleague said, "If it, so- or, or, it sounds like this isn't something that's broken, so let's not try to fix it. And here's another quote from the staff at this gender clinic. Quote, if someone told me they use a litter box instead of a toilet and they were happy with it, and it's part of their life that brings them fulfillment, then great. Again, this is a medical clinic attached to a real hospital. And you see already pansexual, they, he, xenogender. This is a re- reoccurring theme where these young people are being caught up by this nonsense that can't, they can't even explain. But then medical professionals and medical doctors are literally agreeing with them and medicating them with potentially dangerous medications or, or life-altering medications at you know ages of 16 and younger. We'll see another one over here. The therapist recalled in the free press how the autistic child was unable to communicate properly with her, and I believe this child is 13 years old, and started showing Pitske, which is the therapist's name, extremely sadistic and graphic pornographic videos on her phone during her first visit. She said the troubled girl was hyper-fixated on the porn videos and said that they were one of the only genre available to, her, available to her when she was growing up with her abusive mother. The girl, who despite being a teen would suck on pacifiers and watch Teletubbies, recalled how her mom nearly killed her sister. She had also just been expelled from school for threatening to blow up the building. She was still affirmed, though. And then here's more uh, quotes from the article. Tamara Pitske, 36, quit the profession after she was reprimanded by her superiors for not immediately signing off on children's requests for puberty blockers and sex change surgeries. Some of the kids who wanted to be transgender had a multitude of issues, including physical and mental abuse, raging anxiety, raging anxiety and depression and suicidal thoughts. Despite this, she was shunned into quickly signing papers to give them life-changing medication, and when she brought up her concerns, she was accused of being prejudiced against trans kids, reports the Free Press. And here's a quote from her. I was getting the message from my supervisor that when a young person I was seeing expressed discomfort with their gender, the diagnostic term is gender dysphoria, I should throw out all my training. No matter what the patient's history or other mental health conditions that could be complicating the situation, I was simply to affirm that the patient was transgender and even approve the start of the medical transition. And this, again, is a recurring theme within gender ideology. They literally prey on troubled youth, oftentimes autistic kids, foster care youth who have no you know, adult supervision, no parents, they're lost in life, they're very sad, depressed, they don't know who to trust, and these people come in and take advantage of their mental health issues. Medical professionals taking advantage of them. Here's another whistleblower uh, whistleblower from, I believe, the Washington Clinic in St. Louis. So obviously a major, very respected hospital. She left the clinic because she could no longer participate in what was happening there. She says, by the time I departed, I was certain that the way the American medical system is treating these patients is the opposite of the promise we make to do no harm. Instead, we are permanently harming the vulnerable patients in our care. And she even talked about how uh, they seem to prey on children in foster care, sexual minorities, and the poor. And so the reason people need to start speaking out about this is because politicians have been making this their number one cause. And you can see here as an example, non-binary Colorado State Rep Stephanie Vigil. She doesn't believe in the nuclear family, which means that a, a child raised in a family with two parents, mom and a dad, and thinks parents should not have full say over their kids. I'll show you an example of this later on. She introduced a bill which would allow kids to change their names at school without parental knowledge and would punish teachers who did not agree with it. Right, so these psychotic politicians who are buying into all this gender nonsense, you can see here the pride flag behind uh, these people, are now trying to make these state laws or even federal laws that will mandate you to transition a child even if that child has no idea what they're talking about. Now, there are certain people in the uh, online world that are taking 
a stand against this, fighting against this. This guy is one of them, Billboard Chris. So he stands in front of locations all around the world with a sign on himself that says, children cannot consent to puberty blockers. He recently did that in 2022 in front of the American Academy of Pediatrics conference in Anaheim. And even the majority of pediatricians there agreed with his message. So you are not in the minority. You are in the majority for sure. You just have to start actually saying something. And it does not have to be in public. You can do it within your own profession at conferences and you know lectures and stuff like that. And just to show you that doctors are finally getting fed up with this, here are screenshots that I took myself from a physician's Facebook group with over 70,000 physicians where one doctor posted a picture of a quiz that her 7th grade child was taking for his biology or science class. And the question was, the uterus is associated with which system? He chose the female reproductive system. That was the wrong answer. The correct answer apparently was just reproductive system in general because what they're saying is it could be a male or reproduct or a female reproductive system and surprisingly to my surprise the majority of doctors actually came out against this calling it nonsense and there was a huge argument in the comment section and again these are all medical doctors arguing this so here is a sample of some of the things that people were saying so one doctor says this is madness. Another doctor jokes that the year is 2024. Assigning gender without permission is a crime punishable with jail time and possibly death on social media. And the other thing, there's a lot of doctors liking these comments and laughing at these comments, showing their support, which would have never been heard of, like, let's say, even one year ago. Another doctor says if someone has a uterus, they are truly female. Another doctor says makes my blood boil. Can't believe this shithole society we live in now. His answer was 100% correct. Another says, Jesus, I'm glad my kids are grown and flown so they don't have to learn this. Uh, another doctor says, wow, the brainwashing agenda for children continues. Another doctor says, this is insanity, RIP biology. Uh, another doctor says, study finds indoctrination is successful when started young, implying that they are trying to brainwash these kids, which I agree with. And then there's just, there's just more and more comments. I won't go over all of them. But there were tons of comments, majority in favor of calling this ridiculous. So let's get into the actual history of the gender movement and it's dark history. And one of the pioneers was a guy named John Money. He either started the gender movement or he's the one who really brought prominence to it. So he is believed he first started using the term gender as opposed to just sex in the 1950s. And this was meant to differentiate our, bio our biological sex from behavioral characteristics that may be attributed to social conditioning, such as men are out in the work or the workforce. They have short hair you know, jeans, boots, etc. Well, women are in the kitchen or they wear dresses and lipstick, makeup. They're softer, you know, more feminine, etc. Stuff like that. So Money also used a pair of young boys, the Reamer twins, as test subjects on his experiments in, or in, in gender. So there was a boy who was born Bruce Gender. Uh, and later on in life, he became David. I mean, sorry, not Bruce Gender, Bruce Reamer. And he became David later on in life because in between, he was transitioned into Brenda. So he was a young boy who underwent a botched circumcision for the treatment of his phimosis. And because it was botched, it led to significant disfigurement. So his parents were distraught. And there was his PhD, John Money, who convinced them to allow Brian to just simply undergo, or it should say Bruce, sorry, to simply undergo clinical castration and to just raise him as a girl. So they eventually agreed, thinking there was no other option. So he was raised as Brenda. So Bruce became Brenda. Uh, and at the age of 22 months, uh, David or Bruce or Brenda <laughs> underwent a bilateral orchiectomy in which his testes were surgically removed. And then he also had a rudimentary uh, vulva constructed by genital plastic surgery. So here's a picture of Brenda or Bruce. And then here's later on in life after he transitioned or started thinking of himself back as a boy or a man again. And he was now going by David. I think maybe he was just trying to forget about his, about his past life entirely. So Money subjected the siblings to frequent and grotesque counseling and examination sessions. He would ask them about their genitalia, their sexual desires at the age of six. He would show them naked pictures of children and adults having sex, ask them to strip naked so he could inspect their genitalia. He also had them simulate ex, uh, sex acts before the age of eight. And at the age of eight, he, he attempted to convince the family to complete the surgical construction of uh, Bruce's vagina. At the age of 12, he convinced the family to start giving him estrogen. 
Uh, however, soon after the brothers they become they became so fearful of money and the visits because they hated them so much that they refused to go visit him any further, and so they fell out of his care. And here's a quote from John Money, where he says, If I were to see the case of a boy aged 10 or 11 who is intensely erotically attracted toward a man in his 20s or 30s, if the relationship is totally mutual and the bonding is genuinely, genuinely totally mutual, then I would not call it pathological in any way. So effectively, what he's saying is normalize pedophilia. Pedophilia is not wrong. A relationship before, between a young boy and a fully grown man. So... Back to Money in his, in his experiments, he published his findings about David or Bruce in books and magazine articles, and he had, that's how he kind of based his theory that boys and girls are gender fluid, you know, that term you hear nowadays, because of what he was able to do with David, and then this was actually given some credibility in the media and academic world, and that's how the initial movement started, you know, got, it's the, got the ball rolling many, many decades ago. So after Money stopped his care, David became David, and he went back to being a boy. He stopped hormones, and however, his genitals were now totally disfigured, and he never lived a normal life afterwards. His mother remarked, that kid has done nothing but suffer all of his life, and then eventually, after numerous suicide attempts throughout his adult life, David Reamer finally took his own life at the age of 38. And here is a picture of David and his mother. They were actually on the Oprah show in the year 2000 under with a segment called Why the Boy Who Was Raised as a Girl Forgave His Mother. Here's a picture of him as a fully grown adult. Unfortunately, like I said, he committed suicide, probably from all the trauma, psychological trauma, and maybe even physical trauma he went through. Now, the problem is we are now repeating this experiment on tens of thousands of kids. And I hesitate to even call it an experiment because an experiment suggests that you're trying to find out some outcome. But there is no real experimental outcome coming going on here. These people are literally just butchering children. <clears throat> so that was the initial history, but the modern movement is still completely full of child abusing, pedophilic, and sexually perverted men. And that is evident in the trans transgender pride flag that is everywhere that you've probably seen. Everywhere in stores at schools here it is at the white house or on top of government buildings and in, in front of the federal building over here and it's notable for its light blue light pink and white color and this was the original trans pride flag it was incorporated into the old school pride flag the rainbow pride flag and you can see the colors here again right so let's take a look at this flag itself so who created the flag it was this guy called robert hoge here is Robert Hodge in the, in the Navy. Then later on, he transitioned into a woman called Monica Helms, or he called himself a woman. So he was a Navy vet who used to steal his mother's clothing as a child to try on. He continued stealing women's clothing as a, an adult because it aroused him. And then he, quote unquote, transitioned into a woman after leaving the Navy. He wrote many books and short stories under the name Monica Helms. So that's why we had many quotes from him and knew what he was thinking. So he admitted Quote, that I would spend hours looking at the girls at school. I studied them more and more with my studies slowly evolving into lust. The feelings I had, dressed as a woman, ran the gamut of human emotions. Sexual excitement topped the list of what came over me while wearing women's clothes. So he's openly admitting in his own words that he did not think of himself as a woman. He just got really turned on and aroused by wearing women's clothing. He also authored short stories with sexual themes including forced feminization, where men are transformed into women as humiliating punishment. One story, in particular, sexualizes a child, and Helms said the concept came to him in a dream. Helms also took his last name from the Lord of the Rings. There's a area in the book, I believe it's like a castle, called Helms Deep. So that's where he got his name from, indicating his interest in fantasy. And this interest in creating fantasy or an avatar based in fantasy is very common in the trans community. This is why... Trans identities are very common in the anime and cosplay world that you typically see at Comic-Con conventions. And if you go to these conventions, you'll see tons of very young people identifying as transgender and non-binary because for them, it's a, an escape from their normal lives. So here's more quotes from Monica Helms from an article written about him by Genevieve Gluck. So... It said that he wrote erotic short stories, including one about young girls who never age. Uh, 
in while serving in the U.S. Navy during the 1970s, he began stealing women's underwear from the laundry room of his apartment complex. Here's another quote from him. He says, I identify as a female, but I'm more of a bi-gender person. This allows my brain to float between multiple worlds or solidly take on one role or another. Sometimes I am a man and a woman at the same time. Or I can change back in or I can change in a nanosecond, then paint change back just as fast. So apparently you can just you can just uh quantum leap between genders at you know, whenever you want. And yet Medical doctors and medical organizations will tell you this is all foolproof science. Now, let's take a look at the color scheme of the flag. Light pink for little girls and light blue, blue for little boys. And this is in Helms' own world, own own words, or sorry, Roge, uh, Robert Hoge, Monty Helms, same person, where he says, quote, the light blue is the traditional color for baby boys and the pink is the traditional color for baby girls. These are the exact same colors that pedophile communities use. So here's a picture of the flag. Here is a picture of a minor attracted person's support chat, support chat infographic. Now, minor attracted person is a new academic term for people who are attracted to minors, a.k.a. pedophiles is what they were previously known as. Now, you can see the colors. Light blue, light pink, and white, same as that colors. It's not a coincidence. He even states it himself. And there's here's a researcher, Sarah Good, from a organization to prevent sexual offending who talks about the online symbols and languages and cultures of online pedophiles. And she says explicitly, quote, the pink half represents girl lovers and the blue half represents boy lovers. Make no mistake about it. This is not a coincidence. It's even here on the cover as one of, uh, one of his own books from Robert Hoge, written under Monica Helms, where you see the light blue and then the pink from a book called, or a story called, Tales from a Two-Gendered Mind. This is not a coincidence, and we will see this exact theme pop up over and over again. Now, I'm going to show you how this theme of children and forced feminization and punishment for, you know, being feminine stuff like that or being masculine have actually been incorporated into medical recommendations from official medical organizations that hospital systems in the united states follow so wpath is the world professional association of transgender health it is the world's authority on transgender medicine they make the recommendations that the world's medical societies hospital systems and doctors follow this is one of the most completely fraudulent organizations in the world However, you are now forced to uh, obey their recommendations. So Richard Levine, who now goes by Rachel Levine as a supposed trans woman, is the current assistant secretary for health for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and also an admiral in the U.S. State, United States Public Health Service Commission Corps. Now, this guy is a very prominent member of the WPATH. He makes uh, speeches there often. And WPATH just released a standards of care for the health of transgender and gender diverse people version 8 released in 2022 now to show you the connection between pedophilia and children and wpath in this most recent standard of care document there is a section on unix now for those of you who are not familiar with what a eunuch is, the short definition is it is a castrated man placed in charge of a harem or employed as a chamberlain in a palace. Effectively a man who is meant to guard the king's concubines or wives and he was castrated so that way he could not have sex with them. This is in ancient times in China, Middle East, and medieval times. And if you don't believe me that there is actually a chapter on this in, in the most recent standards of care, here is a screenshot that I took myself when I downloaded the standards of care PDF file myself only a few days ago. Here you can see standards of care for the health of transgender and gender diverse people, version 8. And here's a screenshot I took, chapter 9, Unix. They also, in the most recent WPATH conference, were actually giving lectures on this on unix specifically and i have screenshots in the actual video from the lecture where they go into very deep detail about all this but like i said i couldn't include everything now what is a eunuch exactly it is a castrated human uh, male from remote antiquity eunuchs were employed in the middle east and in china in two main functions as guards and servants of harems 
uh, in harems or other women's quarters, like I said. So most went, un underwent castration as a condition of their employment, though others were castrated as punishment or after they had been sold by poor parents. So the parental thing is something that will pop up repeatedly in gender medicine as well. And so it, this offer, information, there's nothing unique about this. These are all from just online encyclopedias. And many people from Asian culture are very familiar with the idea of eunuchs. And so this is an infographic from another um, online article talking about why people became eunuchs. So one major reason was coercion. About an eighth of those who became eunuchs were young children bowing to parental pressure. Families would receive a cash reward for donating their sons, but they also hoped their children would have a more comfortable and prosperous life in the palace. So again, we're going back, not only eunuchs, but this parental pressure from parents uh, almost forcing their kids to become castrated, and we'll see this pop up again, and this focus on children. Does any of this sound scientific or medical? Absolutely not, but it is absolutely being used as part of gender uh, dysphoria recommendations in the United States. Here's more where people were uh, coerced to become units out of punishment uh, because of poverty. And then here's showing how they would actually keep the testicles and the penis as a precious or like a souvenir. Now, again, here is another screenshot that I took myself from the actual PDF file from the WPATH standards of care. And I'll read from it directly. So you know that they're talking about the same exact eunuchs I was just talking about, so there's no confusion that, oh, maybe they're not talking about the same one and that I'm, I'm being too extreme. Here's what they say. Quote, while there is a 4,000 year history of eunuchs in society, the greatest wealth of information about contemporary eunuch identified people is found within the large online peer support community that congregates on sites such as the eunuch archive at www.eunuch.org, which was established in 1998. Well, I'll, I'll talk about this later on as well. So on this website, as of January 2022, there are over 130,000 registered members from various parts of the world. And then later on, it talks about the types of threads. There's hundreds of thousands of posts and threads. For example, quote, two threads giving instructions for self-castration by injection of different toxins into the testicles have about 2,500 posts each. And have been read each has been read well over 1 million times so they are literally using online internet users posts where they talk about self castration by injecting their own testicles with toxins as some sort of information or knowledge base with which to make their medical recommendations to be used in hospitals and here is another screenshot i took where they actually have their recommendations and they talk about meeting the needs of eunuch individuals. So now eunuchs are now like this protected class, this new class of people that people can identify as. Now to get more into that website, www.eunuch.org, here is .org, here is a video between Genevieve Gluck uh, uh, giving an interview where she talks about what is specifically on this website and in particular how much child pornography in terms of written stories there are on this website. I'll talk about the research that I did on the eunuch archives, which was related to the WPATH. So, okay, so we established what WPATH is and why they're influential. Um, but in December, they released the updated draft standards of care. Standards of care are the recommendations for medical authorities on how to treat what they call gender dysphoria. Um, in the new draft standards of care, which is the version eight, they introduced for the first time the concept of a eunuch as a gender identity. Um, so I, when I saw that, you know, alarm bells went off, I, I thought, you know, this, this is insane. How could they be citing this website? Uh, because that website is filled with written pornography and nearly half of it is written pornography about castrating children violently um, in horrible detail. Um, there's stories in there about children going to a doctor with a problem of stunted puberty, and then the doctors rape them, um, written in really graphic, graphic detail. The members of the forum write the stories themselves. They keep the ongoing archive of them. 
Uh, there's currently nearly 10,000 of these stories, and of those, about 4,000 are about minors, or about children. So again, <laughs> this website was cited in the standards of care for WPATH, who creates international guidelines about transitioning children, especially recommending drugs to them that we know are used to chemically castrate sex offenders. Uh, this website eroticizes the castration of children um, and even of doctors sexually abusing children. So as you can see, a website that was used as a source of information for recommendations to be used in hospital systems to treat gender affirming care was it, it, the website itself was actually full of stories written by random internet users talking about not just self castration by injecting toxins but also tons of stories involving the rape of children uh sexualizing children castrating children uh even uh, fantasy stories where doctors were raping children this is what is being used by these organizations and if you don't believe me I'm going to show you videos from Boston Children's Hospital where they explicitly talk about following the recommendations of WPATH. The eligibility for getting gender affirming surgeries at Boston Children's Hospital is basically the same as it would be for most other hospitals or surgeons in the United States. And that's the case because we all follow the World Professional Association for Transgender Health or WPATH standards of care. For top surgery, you are requested but not required to have been on gender affirming hormones for at least a year if you're a trans woman it's really encouraged that you be on estrogen for at least a year because you want to maximize your natural breast growth many surgical centers require you to be 18. at boston children's hospital for top surgeries we'll see people as young as age 15 if they've been affirmed in their gender for a long period of time so you see many things number one she acknowledges that they follow WPATH recommendations. Number two, she acknowledges that they, they perform surgeries on children as young as 15. And then the last thing is they say that, you know, they will give you surgeries if you've been affirmed for a long period of time. This next video I'm going to show you is where they literally talk about taking kids into the gender pipeline of the medical transition system at the age of two or three. So, of course, by the time they reach 13, 14, 15, they're going to have been affirmed for many, many years and therefore qualify for these surgeries because they're being brainwashed and at a young age and then taken into the medical system at a young age. So most of the patients that we have in the GEMS clinic actually know their gender, usually around the age of puberty, but a good portion of children do know as early as seemingly from the womb, and they will usually express their gender identity as very young children, some as soon as they can talk. They might say phrases such as, I'm a girl, or I'm a boy, or I'm going to be a woman, or I'm going to be a mom. Kids know very, very early. So in the GEMS clinic, we see a variety of young children all the way down to ages two and three, and usually up to the ages of nine. When they come into the clinic they'll see one what... right so she's talking about taking kids as young as two or three into the clinic and then reiterating that kids as soon as they can speak will tell you about their gender uh, and then here's just more videos talking where surgeons talk about how they will openly give uh hysterectomies and even the creation of fake vaginas and penises to children hysterectomy is very similar to most hysterectomies that occur a hysterectomy itself is the removal of the uterus, the cervix, which is the opening of the uterus, and the fallopian tubes, which are attached to the sides of the uterus. Some gender-affirming hysterectomies will also include the removal of the ovaries, but that's technically a separate procedure called a bilateral oophorectomy. And not every gender-affirming hysterectomy includes that, and people who are getting gender-affirming hysterectomies do not have to have their ovaries removed. Penile inversion vaginoplasty is the full name of vaginoplasty. In this procedure, the surgical team is creating the outer and the inner vagina. The reason it's called penile inversion vaginoplasty is because we use the penile skin and the scrotal skin in order to uh, reconstruct the vagina. By doing so, we um, break it down to all of its components and we use uh, some of the tissue to reconstruct things the way they were supposed to be for that patient. So this slide is really in relation to Richard Levine, who is like the uh, 
assistant director, I believe, of the Human Health Services, one of the highest doctors in the land, who's also like an admiral in the uh, military corps. But just showing you how a lot of these men, like white men, are being blamed for everything in society. So a lot of these generals in the high up positions in the, in the military are simply just changing out their pants for a skirt, growing out their hair, and then calling themselves women. So that's how they get promoted nowadays. It's very easy, so why wouldn't they? This guy just threw some earrings on, grew his hair out, put some makeup on, and then boom. He's now the director of Space Force as a quote-unquote trans woman. Same thing with this guy. He was promoted up. He looks like the comic book guy from Simpsons. This guy is a, it's the funniest story of all. He identified as a woman and became the spokesman for like the Ukrainian army. The official spokesman. Now, I'm not making that up. I'm also not making this video up, which I'll play a little snippet of. You can see just how ridiculous the entire trend is. Russia hates the truth that their obsessive focus on a Ukrainian volunteer is simply allowing the light of the Ukrainian nation's honesty to shine brightly. Next week, the teeth of the Russian devils will gnash ever harder, and their rabid mouths will foam in uncontrollable frenzy as the world will see a favorite Kremlin propagandist pay for their crimes. That's all real. <laughs> I did not make up a single thing. But when you live in a world where anyone can just throw on a wig or not even have to throw on a wig and just say they are, they are a woman and then become one, uh, this is what you get. Russia? So that's the official medical aspect of it, just very one very small part of it. But another reason why this is so popular nowadays is because these LGBT organizations are also backing it. And so people think, oh, well, if LGBT organizations are supporting it, then it must be good. So here's one organization called Mermaids. It's in the UK, but it's very similar to ones here in America. And they talk about how they've been supporting trans non-binary people for, since 90, 1995. They're one of the biggest in UK. So this is a picture of Susie Green. And note the hair color as well. Like I said, it's a signal. Kind of like the witches from Hocus Pocus. But she was the head of Mermaids until 2022 when she resigned. And her own son was diagnosed with gender dysphoria as well. And the circumstances be behind her son being diagnosed are very suspicious. So effectively, her son was very effeminate, very kind of like a girly kid, uh, played with girly toys and stuff like that. And so the father did not like that, and then they had to find a solution. So here in a, article, a quote from an article, so it says, quote, However, the boy's father, Tim, did not approve of their youngest son's behavior. It created tensions within the marriage, and the couple went to counseling. But what happened next perhaps explains... Green's dogmatic approach to trans issues in later life. She returned the toys to her son, and by the age of four, he had announced to his mother that God, quote, God had made a mistake, and he was supposed to be a girl. So at age seven, he was referred to the Tavistock Clinic, which was a gender clinic in the UK that was shut down after getting tons of lawsuits from kids who were transitioned, and then the son was diagnosed with gender dysphoria. So have you ever heard of a four-year-old announcing to his mother that his, God had made a mistake and he was supposed to be a girl? Unless the mother is effectively trying to trans the kid. So that's that's pretty much what happened. So Stephanie Davis, area of Transgender Trend, an organization advocating for evidence-based care of gender dysphoric children, says, quote, Susie Green's experience in her own family was upsetting, but not that uncommon. Dad can't accept an effeminate son. Family falls apart. But her solution was an excessive reaction to family troubles, to say the least. So what what's going on is that the parents, especially like a dad, can't live with a gay son so rather than having a gay son they would rather transition the kid to a girl you know a, a trans girl and since that girl obviously is still going to like guys because it's really just a gay kid uh it's now a straight daughter so they would rather have a straight trans daughter than a gay son and a lot of these effeminate kids or effeminate boys just grew up to be gay kid or gay guys so similar to david reamer uh, her son had multiple suicide attempts and then in, at the age of 16 was taken to Thailand to be surgically castrated. And so what I'm talking about is, you know, effectively a form of gay conversion therapy. Uh, therapy. Gay rights campaigners are also concerned that mermaids under Greed's leadership was complicit in a form of gay conversion therapy. Dennis Kavanaugh, lawyer and director of the Gay Men's Network, points to a 2012 survey of Tavistock patients, which found that 90% were just same-sex attracted. This echoes what Tavistock whistleblowers said about the service that Susie Green's mermaids 
help transform, that it was a form of con- conversion ther- therapy for gay kids. Quote, so many potentially gay children were being sent down the pathway to change gender. Two of the clinicians said there was a dark joke among staff that there would be no gay people left. So like I said, rather have a trans daughter who is quote-unquote straight instead of a gay son. Uh, It was also discovered that non-medically trained staff were allegedly advising that puberty blockers were completely reversible when evidence suggests otherwise. As a result, Mermaid finds itself under investigation for its dealings with children. Now, this idea that puberty blockers are reversible is being propagated by medical authorities within the U.S. All the major medical organizations are saying it, uh, even though it's not true at all. And here's the proof, is that Susie Green's son was placed on so many hormones and puberty blockers that when he was taken to to Thailand to be castrated by his own mother, the course of puberty blockers that he had been on for years had made his penis so small that doctors were unable to construct a neo-vagina with it. And then there's also videos of Susie laughing at her son not having enough tissue to form a vagina. Because these these parents are honestly cruel to their own children. And here's more evidence of the connection of pedophilia with a lot of the gender ideology movement in these organizations. Tying back into what I talked about in the beginning of the lecture. So here's Dr. Jacob Breslow, an associate professor of gender and sexuality. Uh, He's written books about the queer life of children's desires. And he also, he was a trustee for the Mermaids organization. He had to resign later on. But he wrote a blog for eight years that called for pedophilia to be reframed as a sexual identity uh, and was a subscriber to a magazine for child abusers. And so that's all right here. Here's a picture of one of the magazines. This same guy... Uh, He had to resign because he spoke at a symposium for an organization called NAMBLA. So NAMBLA stands for North American Man-Boy Love Association. An association explicitly for grown men who are in love with boys. I'm not making that up. That is a real thing. So he, at the symposium, Breslow read from a paper in which he rejected the understanding of pedophilic attraction to children as being inherently harmful and supported the concept of pedophilia being classified as a sexual or political orientation. So now you see how it ties into the what other videos I showed you earlier with the Pride Festival and all those people talking about their sexuality, even though they can't even explain it, and how it closely ties into their political movement, which is to oppose anything remotely conservative or they oppose the American flag, etc. So it all ties in together. The pedophilia, the organizations, the political correctness, everything ties in together. So coming close to an end. So a summary of the trans history. The pioneers of the field abused and mutilated young boys, had them engage in sex acts, and destroyed their lives to produce meaningless results. The creator of the trans flag is an adult man who became aroused in women's clothing and used the exact same colors that pedophiles use to design the modern-day transgender flag that you now see everywhere, including in front of preschools, elementary schools, daycares, uh, and libraries and college campuses across the country. Also, the largest and most respected trans health organization in the world, that is the world's leading authority on transgender health supposedly, advocates for the creation of eunuchs and takes medical advice from violent child pornography forums. Many of the LGBT organizations that support transgenderism are also closely linked to child pornography sites and groups and the purposeful transing of kids to avoid a gay child or to prove their loyalty to a social cause. And then lastly, the story of David Reamer, Susie Green, and her son, the classic tale of eunuchs and the inclusion of the eunuch chapter in the WPATH standards of care all paint a darker picture, which is that the underlying reason for much of the trans movement is a desire to be seen by society and not looked down upon. It is a social climbing system that is often pushed by parents doctors, and LGBT organizations themselves. This social movement has now been taken as factual medical science and has been completely medicalized, and you are not allowed to question this even if you are a doctor. Parents 
and adults or adults are literally experimenting with children by starting them on puberty blockers or hormones at a very young age, sometimes as young as eight, and then they oftentimes proceed to full, full-blown full genital reassignment surgery as adolescents with many complications and many problems because of the the small amount of tissue available to actually do any surgeries like this, which is going to l- lead to a lifetime of complications and painful complications for these children, especially as they grow into adults. And as a result of all the physical and psychological scarring, these kids often attempt suicide multiple times throughout their lives. And these problems are all ignored by medical practitioners, and instead it's all just chalked up to gender dysphoria. And so you as a doctor need to understand that the medical field as a whole has now completely embraced an ideology built upon aforementioned principles, or at least the heads of these organizations that control pretty much all of medicine have embraced these ideologies. And as long as you allow this to remain in the field of medicine, whether you like it or not, this is what you and your medical degree now represent, because they are changing the definitions of man, woman, male, and female, and I'll talk about that in the next lecture, that no matter what field of medicine you are in, you will come across this because the Obviously, you're going to come across male and female patients only, and if you can't even, can't even define that, which you are now not allowed to under the normal definitions, then you're going to have to deal with this ideology. <clears throat> and so lastly, you need to understand that the new trans movement is using both the medical field and the old LGBT community, including the pride flags, as a cover, a disguise to advance their cause. So this way, anytime someone opposes gender ideology or gender-affirming care, even for minors, they can simply scream at you that, number one, you are anti-science, and number two, you are anti-LGBT or transphobic, homophobic, whatever they want to choose. And as you can see, there is a large focus on children in the trans ideology, and this focus has seeped into medicine as well. It is not a coincidence that much of the medical world focuses so heavily on trans kids and their bodies, since that was really what the inception of the movement was all about. That's what the trans pride flag is all about. It's about kids. This is, there's become a pervasive mantra that kids know exactly what is correct with regards to their body, enough so that they can make lifelong changes. Again, even though adults don't, can't even describe what gender is, they think that there's 50 genders, including gender outlaw, uh, aggressive gender, xenogender, all these things. And this goes against all basic common sense and medical ethical rules. It goes against basic reality. But when it comes to transgender care, everyone simply looks the other way and keeps their mouths shut because everyone's too afraid. And then also, some people will say that parents always give consent and therefore, you know, that this this treatment is allowed. However, this is not true as children have been taken away from parents when the parents do not consent to these treatments. And so, here is an example. This is a very recent one from January of 2024 where a Montana family lost custody of their teenage daughter after the girl expressed uh, quote-unquote gender dysphoria because she wanted to be labeled as a boy even though she had other mental health problems such as anxiety and depression and was possibly suicidal. But the hospital system simply just agreed that yes, she must be gender gender dysphoric and the parents did not want to put her on uh, hormones and so the state removed her from the family. So more and more families are going to get broken up from their parents or or kids broken up from their parents as long as medical doctors stay quiet. And this is happening. It has happened many times in the past, and it is going to continue to happen as long as the medical community allows it to happen. So in the next lecture, like I said, I'll talk about the new definitions of male and female that they are now teaching to little kids, although you saw in the Facebook screenshot that I took that they're teaching it to seventh, uh, seventh graders already. I'll talk about how the diagnoses that they claim for gender dysphoria make absolutely no sense from even just a basic logical standpoint and therefore should not even be allowed. And then also how many disgusting treatments they're giving to these little kids, including many, 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 many mastectomies given to 13 to 17-year-old girls. Uh, And that'll be in the second lecture.